Okay, we're live on camera. <clears throat> so, I mean, I think like in, uh, I got a question like if in group situations where people are kind of competing to contribute and maybe it could be like a work situation where it seems like the people with the biggest mouth who take up the most attention and seem to almost like grab the airtime. So if the manager's there, it seems like, oh, this guy must be the cleverest and mm. and is putting in lots of valuable information and no one else can speak kind of thing. What do you do if you're a mm. spiritual student in that those kind of uh, competitive, those kind of competitive environments? Um, I think that's a great question. Mm. And um, uh, I'd also sort of frame it, I would sort of see it from multiple points of view. One is that um, uh, it just depends where you sort of see it, because there's different levels of consciousness of which you can approach it. Now, on a practical level, um, you see, like, uh, okay, here's, here's a few things. One of the things is, like, um, when you're pr practicing being in the observer, it's good to practice being in the observer in um, non-threatening situations first to gain your confidence, you know, uh, in those situations. Uh, because obviously, uh, my thing of being in, when you practice the observer and being in situations which are difficult for the ego, initially one isn't very fluent in those situations, or one is a bit dumb, you know, because uh, a, lot of, a lot of stuff needs to be transcended before the, mm. the observer mm. is able to function effortlessly in situations. So let, let's say, Let's say uh, in a in a very yeah. gr aggressive competitive work environment, if I just try and and I'm not I haven't transcended all the aspects and I try and go to the observer, and then try and compete with people, then mm. I'll probably sound very bad, yeah. because um, you know those guys the other people are, are quite experienced at you know shouting and, and <laughs> grabbing attention. So if you're going to the observer, you, I, w I wouldn't be very eloquent because there's mm. lots of stuff I haven't trained. But if I like, it was practicing the observer in like a gr social settings with a group of friends where there's loud friends, and I'm practicing being the observer and just coming in, and even if it's an eloquent, I usually find that the more I'm in situations when I transcend them, the more eloquent I get mm. later on. Mm. So, so if I was. Um, it's like, but when, when, you see, the observer gets a bit more, less fluent and less confident when um, there's identification and hooks coming in from the environment, then it is, is not so effective. So, so one of the things would be then uh, is to do, so you can, you can, so that's one of the things I could do. I might go to environments where people are like shouting a lot and then just, be practicing being in the observer, but also allowing the voice to mingle, and then see if I can uh, see if the voice can come out and be dominant in those environments, but still retain the observer. And so you go through this process of transcending uh, these environments where everyone's trying to compete for airtime or attention, or who can speak the most and the loudest and and dominate. But you're also developing that capacity in the observer as well. So it's almost like that capacity hasn't been, uh, mm -hmm. it's almost like in the observer, like, it, like people when you first practice the observer, you can only do the observer when you're sitting down with your eyes closed, but yeah. later you can retain the observer with your eyes mm -hmm. open, mm -hmm. and then later you're able to do the observer even when speaking to people and still being the observer. So it's almost like, mm -hmm. it's like in the beginning uh, to retain the observer and be fluent, you know, it takes a while, but then it is possible. Mm. You see, so uh, and and it sort of integrates. There's levels of yeah. intelligence, you know, not not ego intelligence, but universal intelligence that comes in as well after a while. But it doesn't come in straight away. So that's one thing to do. The other thing to do is, um, and as you're able to speak up and be in the observer, because you're transcending each time you get pulled out. Let's say you're trying to speak, and then everyone starts to dominate, and you, don't, you go, you know. So the ego may get triggered. Yeah. Then you could go to the observer of that, and the next time you do it, you'll be less triggered. And then eventually, if people cut you up and try and shout over you, you're not triggered, and you, and, and eventually, uh, speaking will happen, but it's not coming from your ego. There'll be that natural competence of the observer to to hold its own, if you like, just like when you.
as the observer, uh, you know. So there is an observer that can handle all kinds of things and can speak if necessary, if that's what the observer wants to do. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, so that's one way around it, you know. So that's one avenue, like if you're in, in work situations, try it in different situations. Or in the work situation, just try and speak up a little bit. And then as you get triggered or identified, go to the observer. And then next time, try and speak a bit more. And then go to the observer or resolve that. And then try and speak a bit more gradually. And then, and then that capacity will develop slowly over time. And then you, you, you'll be able, they'll be able to be a, a, a natural competing in those environments, but still from the observer not from the ego trying to compete with the other loud voices. So that's one option. So you could try that option. I always think as well, and that, that could be one way. It also depends on the context of the work environment. Sometimes as well, <clears throat> you know, um, I would say in some environments, especially if they are more spiritually aware, um, uh, if the managers are more spiritually aware, they'll know that people who are not necessarily talking, they'll know their character, they'll know that they're contributing a lot, um, they'll know that whatever few words are said are going to be important, where the big mouths aren't really that important. I mean, it depends, like in ego environments, I used to be in the stock market, so there's someone who's just loud and can dom dominate anyone, would be very prized, you know, just to beat everyone up and just show dominance. So that would be valued in, in the company I used to work in. But in other more integrist environments more sp where managers are more spiritual and there's a greater spirituality, actually, you know, the person who's just shouting and dominating, sometimes the manager will have that discernment not to listen to them. And even the one that speaks for a few words will keenly listen because they know that you're coming from a much higher level of consciousness and probably adding more value. So it can also happen, I'm sure, in some environments that the quieter ones still get promoted and are their words are listened to a lot and you don't need to go into that ego competitive environment. So you wouldn't necessarily have to evolve those skills of being the most dominant. In more ego environments, you might, you know, that might not be necessary, but in other environments, I think managers will, even if you're quiet, but they will be able to like intuit that you're actually a good worker and that your words are benefiting the company. And I think even um, more um, astute or spiritually aligned managers will know that actually some people have a very positive effect on the company just by their presence being there. They just know that if that person always shows up, we always have a good day in the office. And when they're not around, everyone tends to become argumentative. Mm -hmm. So you tend to be the boss's favorite. And it's not necessarily an obvious thing why, but you just add a certain peace and calm and mutality and everyone tends to get on well when you're in the office. So, you know, uh, so it's not necessarily, I mean, from an ego perspective, sometimes uh, people may do well in work because they're at a high level of consciousness. <clears throat> um, and um, uh, so those will happen in more enlightened places, you know, mm -hmm. like some people will, some mm -hmm. bosses put meditation in, you know, mm -hmm. into the work environment or will have, mm -hmm. I went from uh, working in, in a very ego, um, ego environment in the stock market, then I had kidney failure. I, wanted to, I just managed to get one job for a few weeks. I knew I had to do something spiritual. But there, so I, I went into ethical fund management. They fired me quickly because I couldn't work like a lunatic. But there they were like getting people doing yoga, you know, in the environment. So they had a much more evolved awareness of, of treating people and, and, and discerning people. So, uh, yeah, so you, you, you'll be intuitively thing. But actually, I think a lot of things can happen in the observer. It take, just take, it takes time and transcending. Because a lot, some of it is like, you know, it's just ego stuff. Like, oh, the, you know, the boss likes him because he speaks loudest and dominates. But this is just an ego positionality. Or uh, I think a main one at work is fear of loss of work. But if you transcend that, then, then there's... If you speak up and, you d and the observer doesn't care whether people like you or not, the observer doesn't care if you get fired. So eventually a fluency comes, you know, and a confidence comes from that. Mm -hmm. uh, later on you find as well in the observer, it says this in The Course of Miracles, God is the source of my security. 
So as you hold to the being in the observer, there's a kind of an infinite bulletproofness, which means that my security is not based on whether the boss likes me or the, the people like me or the company, even if the company fires me, if I retain that state of grace, everything will be okay. Uh, and, uh, and I'm sure in those states, because you're getting into so much power, um, lots of spirit, uh, genius will come forth from those places. And um, people as well, as you transcend stuff, you'll be helping the company a lot because you're, you're in oneness with them. So as you transcend, this person's a loud mouth, that person's dishonest, this person's actually lying about how much they've done. As you transcend that, you're actually clearing a lot of stuff. So you're doing a lot of good uh, in that company. Mm. Thank you.